Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Herrera and I will present the work Learning to Brachiate via Simplified Model Imitation done with Ben Ling and Michael van der Pan at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. Brachiation is the primary form of locomotion for gibbons and siamans, which consists of moving between three branches or handholds using the arms alone. Gibbons and siamangs make this seem effortless and are among the world's most agile brachiators. The brachiating movement is amazing, and there have been multiple previous works attempting to reproduce it, both in simulation and on physical robots. Most works are very limited in capabilities, and the solutions are usually heavily engineered. We present a fully learned articulated model that demonstrates brachiation across challenging sequences of handholds that is the most capable of its kind, performing both swinging and flying phases. To solve this problem, we introduce a general two-stage method for leveraging simplified physical models for reinforcement learning to learn complex behaviors efficiently in a full model. This method is easy to learn, easy to understand, and easy to reproduce. Let's see how this method works. We have two characters. Both have the same goal of learning how to traverse a sequence of handholds. The simplified character, the one in the top left, is a point mass, which is an approximation of the full character, the one on the bottom left of the screen. We first use reinforcement learning, and more specifically the algorithm Proximal Policy Optimization, PPO, to learn a policy that controls the simplified character. Then we use the same approach to learn a control policy for the full character. To do this, we simultaneously use the learned simplified policy to aid the learning by providing an imitation reward signal on what the motion of the character should look like. Now, to learn the simplified and full model policies, we first need to decide on state and action representations. We will click re quickly review this because the choices here really do matter. The simplified character consists of a point mass and a single extendable arm. The full character, the one on the right, instead is a 14-link articulated model that operates in two dimensions. Both of these characters perform the brachiation task in an environment where there is a sequence of handholds. This sequence is randomly sampled at every run, and each handhold is generated according to predefined distributions for height and distance with respect to the previous handhold. The state consists of information regarding the character and information regarding the handholds. The character information for the simplified model consists in the velocity vector of the point mass. Instead, for the full model, it's the generalized coordinates for each joint. For the handhold information, instead, the policy is provided with the distance from the root to the two subsequent handholds. Then the policy outputs an action. This consists in a target offset for each link. For the simplified model, this is basically the target length for the extendable arm, which is then approximated with a spring and damper model, while for the full model, it's the target angle for each joint. The policy also outputs a flat, indicating whether to grab or to release with the, with the hand. The last component to actually learn the policy with reinforcement learning is to define a reward. The simplified model can be learned fast in just 15 minutes of training on a single GPU with a simple task reward, which consists in a plus one every time the point mass grabs a handhold and zero otherwise. The fact that the simplified model can be learned only with a simple reward is desirable, as this allows us to not force any prior in the system and allows for complete freedom in exploring the environment and discover emergent behaviors. The full model instead uses the same task reward as the simplified model, plus an auxiliary reward and a style reward. The auxiliary reward incentivizes the full model to track the motions of the simplified model, while the style reward it's just used for making the motion look nicer. In fact, the style reward is not even needed to solve the task, just for better looking motions. And we will see ablations of this at the end of the presentation. In the following video, we show some example trajectories from the simplified model. In some sequences, you'll notice how the character demonstrates a pumping behavior, 
where it performs extra back and forth swings for gaining momentum and catch harder to reach handholds. Like this one over here. Let's now look at how the simplified model transfers to the full model. At the beginning of training, the full model doesn't know how to use the grab flags to release the hands and to control the character. In fact, while the blue line that represents the simplified model solves this sequence, the full model is stuck on the first handhold. After a while, it learns how to release from the first handhold, but it can't do much more because it doesn't know how to grab. After a few more episodes, it learns how to grab. But still, it cannot complete the general challenging sequences. In fact, after two or three handholds, it fails. Here is a video at the end of training. As you can see, after less than two hours of training, the model is very capable of performing swinging and flying phases, solve challenging sequences, and demonstrating the pumping behavior to grab hard to reach handholds. Because we have access to both the simplified model and the full model, we can use them in pair for planning purposes. In this task, the brown dense line represents the terrain where the character can grab anywhere. After every handhold, we can use the simplified model and the value function of the full model to expand the anticipation horizon by planning for multiple time steps into the future. This allows to grab the terrain in optimal positions to avoid gaps and navigate the terrain. If we were to use only the value function of the full model, it wouldn't work, as this fails to anticipate upcoming gaps more than the future handholds it has access to. Instead, using only the simplified model doesn't work, as it fails to understand what are the true capabilities of the full model. In the following videos, we measure the capabilities of the full model. This sequence was manually generated to constantly measure the limit in pitch variation to climb continuously. We see that it needs to pump to reach every handhold, and at a certain point, it tries not to pump and it fails. This sequence instead has handholds equally distanced at 2.3 meters, which is over the limit seen during training. In this sequence, the full model fails, although the simplified model works. Let's now ablate the full model reward components. As said before, if we remove the style reward completely, the task can still be solved. But as you can see, the motion looks bad and not given like. If we keep the energy penalty and remove the rest of the style reward, the motion is better but still, the body swings more than with the full reward. Thanks for your attention. Please come join us in the interactive session to learn more about our work.